For those of us ready to cruise again when things settle down, we've created a list of some industry-wide changes we'd like to see implemented before ships resume operations. And that's coming up on Talking Cruise. Hi, I'm Chris Cardona. There's no doubt that the current situation across the globe has had a major impact on people, daily routines, and many industries. Hospitality companies, including airlines, hotels, resorts, theme parks, and of course cruise lines, have essentially halted their operations. While I do see a strong rebound in the future for all sectors, I think the unique elements of cruise ship travel pose particular problems going forward if cruising as a whole does not make some operational and policy changes before resuming service. In this video, I'll share my thoughts on changes I feel will make cruising better in the long term and give both new and experienced cruisers reassurance that cruise travel is a safe and wonderful way to spend a vacation. When COVID-19 first started impacting cruises, many cruise lines relaxed their cancellation policies to allow guests to cancel within a day or two of departure. While most guests would normally be in a 100% penalty window, this temporary measure provided guests with a future cruise credit. Even though these programs were meant to be for a limited time, I believe the idea should be continued for the foreseeable future. The main reason would be to reduce the number of people that are willing to travel when they are unwell, simply because they don't want to lose all their money. I can't tell you the number of times I've been on cruises with people that were obviously sick, and I know I've heard many say that they were going on their cruise no matter what. Just before the complete shutdown, cruise lines were performing enhanced health screenings at terminals. While this is a great idea, having guests arrive at a crowded terminal could set off a chain reaction of potential spread if even just one person is contagious. More effort needs to take place to have more people preliminarily screened before they even leave home. It may even be likely that cruise lines continue to include some variations to policies including fit-to-travel guidelines for those at higher risk. Certainly, there would be no absolute method to completely stop anyone from traveling to their cruise departure port, but at a minimum, providing guests with an at-home pre-cruise health questionnaire will hopefully have them more aware. I think combining the pre-screen with more lenient last-minute cancellation policies would go a long way to combat the arrival of sick guests. Continuing on the idea of keeping guests safe when they arrive at their port of embarkation, staggering the arrival, check-in, and boarding process can serve two purposes. Firstly, having less people in the terminal buildings will reduce the overall exposure if there are any affected individuals. Also, this could hopefully allow for a more thorough screening process with small groups at any one time. The idea of staggering arrival times is not new to the cruise industry. Many cruise lines have initiated such programs over the last several years or at least guided guests to arriving at preset intervals. While this concept will inevitably make the entire boarding process longer, new onboard cleaning procedures following each cruise will likely be in place, pushing boarding times to later in the afternoon. While I have always marveled at how much cleaning occurs on cruise ships, especially during turnaround days, a much more stringent approach will be necessary in the future. Aside from making things look shiny and new, rigorous disinfecting protocols need to be put in place with regular frequency. Such efforts to make public spaces, staterooms, and especially large gathering areas like dining rooms and entertainment venues safer for guests will keep the spread of not only coronavirus but many other illnesses in check. Aside from what the cruise lines do to mitigate the spread of illness, 
Each guest must do their part as well. This includes regular hand washing, confining oneself to their stateroom when not feeling well, and reporting illnesses to ship's personnel. Finally, the generally lax efforts in the past to get all guests to washi-washi should be enforced 100% of the time, with more sanitizing stations throughout the ship. I know it's always been easy to walk into a cruise ship buffet, grab a plate, and help yourself to whatever you want. Truth is, while you certainly washed your hands before grabbing that spoonful of eggs, you might not be able to say the same for that man, woman, or child who came before you. With new ships offering more and more dining options, it's not just the buffet either. Have you seen what the self-serve ice cream stations look like on a busy sea day? Going forward, Cruise Line should have staff ready to serve you whatever you want. This will be one of the easier changes to implement, and while it might take longer to get that second or third piece of chicken, it will be a better way to control who touches utensils and handles food and serving dishes in general. Thanks for watching. I hope at least some of these changes and perhaps others are considered before ships return to service. Don't forget to like this video, post your comments and questions, and subscribe for more Talking Cruise.